Hello everybody, I'm Ding Wensu, a PhD student with Frank Chan at FML. My PhD project focuses on the regulatory factors in Bloom syndrome. It's a Mendelian disease caused by the dysfunction of Bloom helicase. More than half of Bloom syndrome individuals develop cancer with a mean age of 26. Other clinical traits include increased risk of diabetes, immunodeficiency, and in general, they have a shorter lifespan. How can the dysfunction of a helicase lead to so malignant clinical traits? What's in the black box lying in between? Bloom syndrome cells showed characteristics of genome instability. The expression of cancer ready genes are dysregulated. What else can be in the black box? One substrate of Bloom helicase, DNA G quadruplex, caught my attention, is a secondary DNA structure formed by guanine rich sequences. How does the DNA G quadruplex look like? Now, please picture a square shaped table with four legs in your head. At each corner of the table sits a guanine, and the four legs are DNA chains. If you stack two or three such guanine tables on top of each other, you get DNA G quadruplexes. As you can imagine, the occurrence of such a 3D structure in a genome may interfere with the interaction between DNA and other factors. For instance, it may inhibit the progression of DNA replication machinery resulting in genome instability. It might affect the interaction between histones and DNA, changing the local chromatin accessibility. Given its greater regulatory potential and based on previous studies, in my PhD project, I have the hypothesis that DNA G quadruplexes might serve as the bridge between the upstream bloom dysfunction and downstream molecular changes. If you want to know more about DNA G quadruplexes and hear their stories with the bloom syndrome, please come to my seminar in two weeks. Looking forward to seeing you there.